The talk addressed one of the major transformations in news consumption in the current times, which is the rise of incidental consumption of news, in particular among the younger segments of population. By incidental consumption of news, what I mean is, you know, people are on Facebook, on Twitter, etc., on their, you know, mobile phones, and while they are there, a story shows up, and they learn about current events that way. But it's not that they went to read the newspaper or they visited the website or they watched the television news uh, as their primary focus of their attention. They were on social media and incidentally news show up and they get the news that way. And they learn about current events, have to do, for instance, you know, going out on a Friday night with your friends uh, to a bar and you want to know what other group of friends are doing in another bar. So you grab your phone, uh, you check your Facebook feed to see whether they have posted something. And what you see is that, oh, my hometown newspaper has posted a story. Oh, I'm interested in that story, so I'm going to spend a few seconds, maybe half a minute, reading that story, and then I see what my friends are doing. So it's not that that person intended to learn about current events, to get the news on a Friday night or a Saturday night or a Thursday night when she was out with her friends. It's that, oh, something crossed her path, and she did that. For me, the first thing that comes to mind when I think about the digitization of the economy is a winner-take-all environment. You know, all media markets, I've studied the media, so that's where I specialize, all media markets are winner-take-all markets in the sense that you see a few newspapers that have a whole lot of the you know, total circulation or you know, a handful of radio stations that are at the top of the list. It happens with all other you know, information and creative uh, sectors. But the web in particular uh, of all media markets is the most highly concentrated one. So it's a market in which there are few winners and many, many, many losers. So think about it. So you have the market for search, and you have many different options available at your disposal. But really, when you think search, you think Google. Right? If you want to uh, interact with others, you think social media, Facebook maybe Twitter, distant place. Um, if you think about buying something, uh, there are many retailers online. What's the first thing that comes to mind? Amazon. If you think about you know, used objects, right? So then you say eBay. But it's not that in all of these categories you have many Right? or even a dozen competitors. They are highly concentrated, these markets, because they usually have one main winner and a whole lot of losers, and there is very little in the middle. So that's why when we think about the digitization of the economy, it's usually much better as a strategy to grow your customer base first and monetize later than, rather than try to monetize immediately, because that leads to a delay in the growth of your customer base. So MySpace was a winner at the time. Facebook, you know, was competing uh, to take over the market. And we have virtually forgotten about MySpace. I, I bet you that if we do a survey, you know, people who are 18 to 25 or, I mean, less 12 to 17, they would know MySpace, your space, which space? Right? So, yes, there have been. Um, but usually first mover advantage uh, counts for a lot. Again, the market for search, Yahoo was before Google. Right, and had a strong market position, and over time, uh, Google really took the lead, and Yahoo is a remnant of what once it was. In the US, there are other parts of the world, like in Japan, where it's still strong, but uh, for the most part, it's just Google. So I think, you know, when we think about the challenges that the digitization of the economy presents for businesses, I think it's still, even though the web was commercialized about 20 plus years ago, um, we still need to uh, distinguish between sort of traditional businesses and born on the web or more digital businesses. For traditional businesses, I still see a tendency to take whatever they have and try to make it web relevant, digital relevant, and rather than moving the other way around, thinking what the customer wants and cater to that. The industry that I study in depth, which is the news industry, is a perfect example of that. You know, great content, but not a lot of focus on that content. And there is a lot of thought by managers about also how can we make the current existing content more, you know, digital friendly, rather than thinking, okay, what do digital customers want and providing 
that content. That hurdle is less so for digital uh, born initiatives, digital born enterprises. The problem for them, again, is I think that it, for every content category, there tends to be one or two, maybe three major winners and not a whole lot of space below that. So the challenge for them is either grow very rapidly or be acquired you know, at the right time or die. So if we look at the past 20 plus years, right? So uh, news organizations really moved onto the web around 1994, 1995 in America. That's when they started. So if you think about, for instance, the case of the New York Times, which is not only America's premier uh, news brand and probably the world's newspaper of record, at least in the English speaking language, um, has outstanding quality journalism, but the size of the enterprise has shrunk over time. And they have focused a whole lot on the digital platform, but that's because they have lost a lot of money uh, on the print side, and they have not been able to turn their print assets into digital assets. Case in point is the Boston Globe, which used to be owned by the New York Times, was acquired right before the commercial web took off in 1991 or 1992, I can't remember the exact date, was sold two or three years ago for a fraction of what it was bought. It was bought for $1.1 billion. It was sold for less than $100 million. Right? If you adjust that by inflation, they basically lost 96 cents on the dollar. And in addition to that, they had to give away a bunch of regional newspapers to do that. So. And that's not because the quality is bad. The quality of the reporting is outstanding. It's because of the challenges that the digital economy presents to traditional players, and sometimes the difficulties that these traditional players have had to adapt to this new competitive environment. Mm -hmm.